What's going on guys? Corey Smith here, CoreFX, bringing you another weekly technical talk video. Uh, I apologize for any of you guys who saw that I missed last week. I uh, was away for the holiday, got engaged, a whole bunch of stuff going on, so I wasn't able to make a video, but we are back this week. Today is Friday, actually. Um, it is July 13th. I'm doing this video on the weekly closing here. I'm going to be covering, if you guys haven't seen these before, I, what I do in these videos, I break down the foreign exchange, Forex, FX, currency markets. I go over all the individual currency pairs, indexes, and what the outlook is looking like for the week ahead. I go over all the US dollar major crosses, and I go over all the other cross, minor cross currencies. Um, and I go over the technical charts, I go over all the dollar pairs and what we're looking like, and then I go over my personal watch list I have developed for the week ahead. So the pairs I will be watching coming up this week, what opportunities I see out there that could or may not play out. Um, and basically just go over how I see the markets, how I set up a watch list, and what pairs I will be keeping my eye on this week. So again, today is July 13th. I am covering the following week ahead, starting on Sunday, the 15th of July. We're halfway through the month of July here. These summer months tend to be slower trading months, so be careful. This is when we want to be extra cautious and extra picky with our trades. Um, you should be following an exact specific strategy regardless, so you should be very picky with your trades to begin with. However, especially in these low volatility, low liquidity summer months, when you have a lot of vacationing, a lot of bankers away on holiday, and really not that much going on, um, that we want to be extra careful and extra cautious picking our trades. There's been a lot going on recently with trade wars, um, Brexit negotiations, and all kinds of things going on, bank interest uh, central banks hiking rates there has been all kinds of stuff going on fundamentally that give us a little bit more boost than normal um, But all in all when you have these weeks where there's not much events going on There's not many catalysts driving price. You want to make sure you're extra cautious on your trades All right guys, so I'm gonna go ahead and dive into the charts here I hope you really enjoy these videos get something out of it Please leave some feedback below on how you feel and what you think about these videos and I'll be sure to add any comments you have Thank you guys. I'll catch you in there Alrighty, so diving into the charts here starting with the indexes as you guys know i do this now at the beginning of every video i go over each individual currency pairs index to get an idea of what that currency that currency is looking like the individual currencies that is so the u.s dollar euro yen british pound um canadian dollar swiss franc aussie new zealand dollar then i'll go over a little bit of the s p 500 get an idea of the stock markets while they're looking oil and gold um open to add anything else to that list that anybody offers or requests that i add but uh, that's what we're looking at now. So US dollar um, broke out of this downtrend, came up, tested this 95 resistance here, and it's still struggling to break it. Um, as you guys can see, we've had one failed attempt, another that looked like was making it out but failed, and now we have what's looking like it's shaping up to be a third failed attempt. Um, we're looking to be closing this week with a Friday um, shooting star candle off this resistance. Now we're still in an uptrend, so we are um, going to be looking for long still, but we have to be weary of what's setting up here. We've got a rising wedge, which is a reversal pattern. We've got this divergence continuing to move in opposite directions, price and the indicator, right? That's a reversal sign for us. And um, now we're having this weekly candle end with a shooting star, this daily candle, but the end of the week it's ending with a shooting star. So definitely going to be a little skeptical of the dollar. The dollar has been a little bit wild and hard to predict lately. Um, this bounce off the 50 SMA was kind of easy to predict, but... Um, other than that, it's been pretty choppy in between this 93.50 and 95 range. So we do want to keep an eye on the dollar and be a little weary of it, but that is what we're seeing right now. We want to be a little skeptical of this reversal, but we are still in an uptrend. So buys are still on the table. Taking us to the euro, a little bit of a different story here with the euro. Um, we've been in a downtrend, came down and hit the support on 111, and since then we have really just based, right? This is just a consolidation basing pattern. Within a downtrend, price is below the 50 and the 200 SMA, the 20 is below the 50 is below the 200. So the sloping of the moving averages are all downward, all in the right order. Um, and we now have bounced off support again, set another lower high off of this uh, resistance at 113 as well as the 50 SMA. And we are pushing lower and it's a lower high than the prior one. So what we have here is a descending triangle formation. Now, uh, ideally to have this formation be you know, it is legit right now. There's two touches to the bottom, to the top. It is official. But uh, the more consolidation we get and tighter this range gets, the better expectation of a breakout we can wait for. So I would expect this pair to base a little bit longer in this range, but I, I am looking for a downward break of the euro. I do still think we see some downward pressure. Um, 
so that that's what we'll be looking for to break that 111 support but in the meantime you can try to ride these little momentum moves to the downside then maybe catch a little bounce higher and then short it out the bottom japanese yen strong break lower this week um, really confirming the break of this daily red trend line here. We broke out of it, retested it, we're stalling around here, and it did finally break through, confirming that this was a solid break. We had some risk on moves in the markets this week, anticipation of the earnings season coming out, the first week of earnings reports coming out for Q2. A um, little bit of optimism there. They've been mixed reports so far, but um, it's been enough optimism to shrug off the trade war scares, and the equity markets have been pushing higher, which has been causing the yen to sell off. Um, the real next target we have is down here at this 84 level. If you look left, this range that we are in for uh, all of 2017 and half of 2018, um, we've now broken, heading back to the bottom of that range. So 84 is the next target I'm looking for on Japanese yen. British pound still making a nice series of lower lows and lower highs. We pulled back to set this lower high, hit the 50 SMA, and have now started to sell off. Looks like we are moving back towards this lower low at 126. Um, well, this lower low, not 127, but 126 is our next projected lower low that we're aiming to go down and reach. So we're definitely looking to ride this pound to the next level lower. We throw a little counter trend line on here. You can see um, that could be a good point where we want to look for this to break lower. But we are seeing we are seeing a bounce today. We are seeing more of a uh, momentum push to continue this trend to the downside, especially with what's going on with the Brexit negotiations with Theresa May. Two of her top officials resigned, made the the pound sell off pretty strong as you can see here Monday Tuesday Wednesday um, so there has been some shaky negotiations in Brexit and this has been causing some stir and I just overall see some more pressure adding to the pound I don't see much upside at this point Canadian dollar pretty much doing exactly as we had anticipated when it broke this strong support and weekly trend line sold off hit support at 74 rallied back up I told you guys we were gonna be looking for shorts around the retest of this level it's exactly what we got price sold off it did attempt to move back up on Wednesday off of those uh, that Bank of Canada hiked interest rates to a point and a half and tried to move higher but as you can see there were much more bears in the market than there were bulls and this got pressed all the way back down lower so I do think that we're gonna move back down to this 74 being the next target here for the Canadian dollar Taking us into the Swiss franc, interesting price action here. We broke out of this bear pennant, which was a strong weekly support level at this 94 to 93.50 target range here. We broke this um, trend line, this counter trend line, the bottom of this pennant pattern. So we've now broken that and closed below it. So I am definitely short the Swiss franc. It could pull back up before moving lower again, but I am definitely all in all short the Swiss franc. And uh, around 92.50 down here, if you look left, is our next projected area we expect it to hit. So uh, that's our view on Canadian, I mean the Swiss franc. Australian dollar, we formed yet another um, bear flag here. So we had this bear flag formed, price broke out, shot lower. We've got another one formed here. I can expect to see price break out, but this 93.50 area here is what I'd be watching for a break of initially. And then this 93 level down here. And then really have some pretty decent room to the downside to around 72 level so uh, as you can see beautiful downtrend lower lows lower highs lower low lower high lower low lower high lower low lower high so if this continues as we anticipate um, that's what we'll be watching for another lower low New Zealand dollar is acting pretty much exactly as we had anticipated this 68 resistance level here was strong support broke rallied up just above it, retested though this strong support level here, and then has sold off since. Taken to the weekly chart, you can see a little bit better. This strong level that we broke here, broke below it, retested, and now the showing initial bearishness off of rejecting that zone here. So we are still looking to the downside for sure with New Zealand dollar. Um, this is a pair that I liked going into this week. I made some great trades off of shorting it. I'm going to look to continue to short it into next week. Uh, so the next chart we're gonna look at here is S&P 500. You can see this stock market how it has been performing well this week As you can see we were trapped below this resistance. We were trapped around these moving averages But this week price broke out and is pushing higher looking like we're gonna close above this 2800 uh, psychological resistance level From there our next targets up here at 2860 to 2880 um, Definitely looking to achieve that target sometime in the next coming weeks and months 
but uh, back to bullishness in the S&P 500. We were range bound and mixed a little bit in here, but this strong push and close higher should be enough to set us back into a, you know, bullish momentum move. We do have earnings reports coming out, so we do want to be careful. Um, if we start seeing some poor earnings reports, that could take a beating on the market because we've seen some strong earnings reports this year. So that is the catalyst right now driving these markets higher, even with the strong trade war talks going on between the really the world, um, but mainly the U.S. and China. They keep we keep tacking on uh, tariffs on each other's exports, importing into our each other's countries, which uh, doesn't look like either nation's backing down. But the markets are shrugging it off. So um, until the markets start paying more attention to that, it's nothing really to worry about. Takes us into oil. Oil sold off this week, rallied back down to this uh, 70, really strong psychological support level, $70 a barrel. Also hit this 50 SMA, got a little bit of a hammer candle, and is bouncing now. Um, I do think that we're going to rally back up to around 74 off oil, so I am bullish oil in this move. If we throw a little Fibonacci level on this last impulse leg higher, we had this support, we rallied up to this resistance, pulled back to the 50 uh, Fibonacci, if you look left. We've also got some structure here on this zone. So that's a great zone. Uh, this is a great risk to reward to go long oil if you were trading oil. And this is a great opportunity to try to ride it to that next push higher up to 74. And gold continues to get crushed. Again, this is similar to why the yen's getting crushed with this risk on. We are at a very strong support level here now. But you can see we made this strong push lower. I told you guys we're looking to sell any rallies. It rallied up here. That would have been a great sell to move it to catch the ride back down here. Um, Really just now, the next move to watch for is a breakout, break through this support, get another push lower, then maybe it rallies again, short the rally. Basically, right now, the gold's, gold's just falling lower, and we want to be trying to take opportunity to uh, enter into this, whether it's breakouts or pullbacks. We want to be looking for opportunities to enter to try to take advantage of this downward trend the gold has been in. Alrighty, so now this takes us over to the US dollar crosses starting with the euro dollar most popular pair we've been in this descending triangle above this 116 support level here um, this top downward trend line of the descending triangle did actually break this past week and we broke out and are now retesting it this could be a reversal right this could be trend now switching directions but um, if you take this pattern out this trend out that trend line you can see we are still in what could be a bear pennant, right? So we've got higher lows being made there. We still have lower highs being made here, right? So we are still in a pennant. We are trading below this 118 strong resistance level still. We're trading above the 116 support, but we're range bound and we are in a downtrend still, right? Look at the moving averages, 20 below the 50, below the 200. Um, we are respecting this 50 SMA. And it's looking like we're closing with a hammer candle, which is a bullish engulfing, I mean, a bullish reversal candle. But um, that being said, this is a little bit of a mixed chart, but we are still in a downtrend. So shorts are still the main priority. I don't see any great shorts until we break below the support, but that is where our eyes should be above anything else. Pound dollar trade that um, we caught earlier last night, as you guys can see here, came down and hit our target and reversed rather quickly. The pound, as you can see, if you look down on an hourly chart like this, has been extremely volatile, right? You can see the moves like this, sold off strong, erased all the gains, right? Sold off strong, erased half the gains, sold off strong, erased all the gains. It's been a very choppy and hard to trade pair, um, the pound in general. So I would recommend staying away from the pound for a little while, but we are, um, we set a lower high, came down now, rejected moving lower, but um, in this trend channel, we could continue moving down, but this is a you know a reversal pattern. We have a little bit of a falling wedge. Um, what's looking like a little bit of an inverse head and shoulders here. If you drop into the four hour, might be able to see a little better. We've got a left shoulder here, we got a head, we got a right shoulder forming. So a lot of mixed signals here, and that that's a sign not to be trading this pair. But um, all in all, it does still look like majority of the uh, probabilities to the downside. But this is just a pair that if you don't have clear cut. Um, direction just move on to something else There's too many opportunities out there u.s dollar canadian dollar performing exactly as expected um 
we are still trading above this 131 support. We are in this uptrend. We broke above resistance, pulled back to retest it as now support. Told you guys this was a great opportunity to look for longs. We got this nice, strong bullish engulfing off of it. And then we had a little bit of a sell off, but I do think we will still make our way up to 133. That is the next target we're looking for here. And uh, I do think that there's opportunity to catch longs in the CAD on its way up to that level. Dollar yen had some strong moves this week. Broke out of this. Um, bullish pennant pattern we had here right we had closing in on the lows closing on the highs we broke out retested it and shot up higher um, as you guys can see we had a nice strong parabolic move breaking this resistance in here pushing higher broke through right through this blue weekly trend line as well um, so really right now we don't want to be chasing this runaway price what we want to do is wait for some profit taking to happen wait for some sell-off to happen maybe come down and retest this weekly trend line and find support and then that's the next move we want to catch on the next move higher wait for that pullback to end and then we want to jump onto that train dollar swiss franc again testing this uh parity 1.0 psychological resistance level and i do not like the looks of this closing candle here we have a doji slash shooting star candle close here um Again, I would be looking more so for trend continuations. So we want this to pull back, and then maybe we catch the move that breaks this dollar parity. Maybe this just opens next week and blows right through it, or maybe we get a sell-off and we even reverse trend. But all in all, we are at a very significant level right now with the Swiss franc, and we want to keep an eye on um, where the dollar Swiss is going to be headed next. Aussie dollar. Um, basically just in a low basing pattern nice downtrend setting lower lows and lower highs we're now in a lower basing pattern a little bit of an inverted head and shoulders shoulder head shoulder we've got a bit of a neckline here um, but you know we are in a strong downtrend so although that reversal pattern is there we do want to be weary of the bearish momentum to the downside and the fact that we are in a downtrend I don't see any shorting opportunities until we break this support of 7350 so where price is at right now i don't see shorting opportunities however if we're able to you know violate this pattern break the support then we're looking for great opportunities for shorts new zealand dollar this was a great trade it was on my instagram we went over it in the student section core fx um, basically price broke out of this strong range that we saw on the um, new zealand dollar i mean on the new zealand index right here was this weekly zone um, we broke below it sold off pretty strong rallied back up to it we had a couple spinning top um, indecision candles up here I showed you guys this was a great point to look for a short off this zone we did come down break this counter trend line and we shorted it and it's moved down pretty nicely uh, we caught some strong trades in here closed and took profits along these small minor moves lower I do still think it can make its way down to 67 20 um, to 67 range but all in all, we took our profits off the table, getting them off for the weekend. Turned out to be a nice trade. And uh, that New Zealand dollar weakness, I'm expecting to continue on. So moving on from that, we've got my watch list that I have flagged here, starting with New Zealand Japanese yen. Um, we are in a downward trend channel. We set a lower low, lower high, lower low. We've now rallied up lower high. We initially were breaking this 50 SMA, which would have violated my thoughts on this being a downtrend look for shorts but it looks like this 50 sma is rejecting price immediately throwing fibonacci out here we can see what we've come up to we're right at the 618 fibonacci level looking left you also can see some structure in here that price has stalled on in the past and that is going to show us that this is strong resistance so maybe we can look for this counter trend line to be violated in the coming week and look for a good short opportunity there especially if we see a turnaround in the equity markets and we start seeing the equity market sell off that'll show us some strength will come to the yen and that'll push this lower this is if we see a continuation to the upside in the stock markets and the yen gets weakened um, you guys can see here we have a very nice level so if price either pulls back here and then continues or maybe we get a little bit of a push higher hits the 200 SMA, then pulls back, and then moves up. Um, those are two options that we have for the coming week ahead. Looking for getting in on longs on this pair at a discounted price once it retraces. Euro yen, uh, another very similar to the CAD yen. The euro has been a little bit stronger, but now we want to find this pair pull back anywhere into this range to look for short, to look for long opportunities to ride the next push higher, right? So if we look to the left, here you can see this is a very strong zone that would be a nice place to have price pull back to find support look for a long entry and catch that next push higher 
Swiss franc Japanese yen, very similar, only we have a beautiful inverted head and shoulders here. I've been talking about this pair for a few weeks now. If it broke this trend line, it finally did. 200 SMA immediately pushed price back. Um, and we could realistically see this fall back down underneath this pattern and invalidate it. Um, we did hit a little bit of a supply zone here. But all in all, we are still seeing this trend reversal. We are seeing this um, moving average crossover. Price is now above the 50 and the 20. 20 is above the 50. Um, and we are looking like this pattern could be holding, looking for long opportunities off this zone. Nice risk to reward with a trade like this because you can just throw your stops below this neckline where you're wrong if price um, goes against you. And then you can set a nice big target because if this pattern plays out, we can expect some big moves to be made off of this reversal. So um, definitely a good pair to keep an eye on. Pound yen, very similar to euro and cad yen. This is if the yen remains weak. I'd like to see a little bit of a sell off in the pound yen pull back to this very strong level at around 147.50 and then look for longs to catch the next ride up to around 150 level here uh, great opportunity here in the pound yen looking for some longs definitely need to see a little bit of a pullback before we go chasing it but i do see some great potential there for some trades um, not too much really going on this week other than that we've got aussie new zealand similar type of deal breaking above resistance um, this is the 1.0950 resistance level as you guys can see right in here price is breaking above it so next week maybe we get a little bit of a burst to start the week and then we pull back and we look for a short a long opportunity in there to try to catch that next push higher breaking critical structure here um, after a one two this is looking like three impulse on a uh, Elliott wave so try to catch this leg three higher and try to see if we can ride this impulse leg um, 10 continuation higher here New Zealand dollar Canadian dollar another trade we took this week off of this beautiful um, break of support rally back up to retest it as you can see on the lower time frames broke this trend line and it's just been really moving lower all week and turned out to be a good trade but um this is another pair that you know you can ride down to this 8850 level look for it to break support again there's some a lot of room to the downside in here down to around 8650 um, if we're able to break this 88 level so definitely want to keep an eye on this pair as well and then aside from that we have the um, CAD Swiss franc not the greatest but as you can see we have reversed this trend We've got a strong push higher. We're testing the 50 and 200 SMA here. So um, we could see price sell off a bit and then maybe catch the next leg higher. Breaking through that 50, 200 SMA is going to be critical, but that is something we could watch for there. All right, so that pretty much covers all the pairs, guys. What I'm watching this week, I got the yen on my radar. Um, pretty big time for the week ahead. I'm not forcing any trades. If nothing works out next week, then I'm not trading. I'm just going to sit on the profits and... Um, continue onward these are the months where you don't want to give back all the money you've been making in the more liquid months so i'm definitely gonna be much pickier and definitely gonna be waiting for the right setups but if any of these trades plan to uh come to plan and end up setting up then i will certainly be looking to trade them so that does it guys i hope you guys enjoy these videos please leave any comments feedback you like anything you want me to include in the next video i appreciate you guys taking the time to watch these a lot goes into me making them so hopefully you're getting some value out of them I appreciate it, guys. Check out the website, corefxtrading.com, uh, on Instagram, core.fx. I appreciate you guys stopping by, and I'll catch you in the next one.